All right, guys. Uh, so I think I can I can finally say that I have finished my collection of experience with um, soft armor carriers. So previous videos on the LVS, wicked cool system, uh, definitely worth checking out. A lot of time with bulks or spear cut armor and kind of what goes into them. Uh, but I had never tried the Velocity Concealment Cut before, or the uh, the L Pack family. So I think when you're looking at uh, intentionally going places that are a, a dangerous environment. It's worth having a conversation on what soft armor coverage you would like to incorporate into your, your loadout, right? Um, you know, my time with bulks was due to frag hazards and rifle plates not being enough protection. Uh, so I, I think there's a lot of uh, comparison that can be said if you're intentionally going somewhere that bullets may start flying, there's going to be a frag, there's going to be shrapnel, ricochet, all sorts of stuff going on, uh, potentially some breaching on your end that you want some coverage for, and incorporating some additional coverage through soft armor is a good conversation to have. So let's get this on the table and look at how it compares footprint-wise to uh, Bulk's armor. I compared the LBS to it as well. I no longer have the LVS, so we're just gonna have to use bulks as the baseline. But I think that's okay, because most uh, DOD contract stuff is gonna be bulks anyways. Uh, so let's get on the table and take a look at this velocity system concealment cut. All right, so looking at this uh, velocity system setup here, uh, before we compare it to bulks, I want to show you uh, the way the footprint is more or less mirrored between front and back. So uh, trying to keep the cummerbund out of the way here, you can see the, the side uh, profile is essentially the same between front and back. Uh, you have a little bit more height on these side panels with the back, uh, but they both extend the same distance out to the sides. And then height-wise, they're, they're nearly identical. All right, so we're flush on the bottom we're flush on the top. Uh, the front panel has this little notch uh, for your chin. And then the back panel has a, a slightly wider profile um, up top, all right? The, the big takeaway though is, is height is more or less the same. So when we take our, our bolts here, and this should be the, the front panel. Yep, so this is the front panel and we overlay this Side to side, it's very comparable. Um, the bulks has a, a little bit more um, length on it. These, this is all medium, by the way. Um, medium bulks and medium uh, concealment cut from velocity. The height here, you get a little bit more shoulder coverage, just a hair, right? Uh, you know, half inch, inch there. You don't have this notch for your chin, though. All right. And I, I can tell you from experience, if you're wearing this as high as you should be, that makes a difference, right? The, the lack of a notch is, is definitely noticeable. Right. <clears throat> then if we work in the back panel here, we'll, we'll flip this over so we're totally fair, right? So we got the back panel on this concealment cut and we drop on our bulks. Again, width, very comparable, if not identical. Uh, you have a little bit deeper plunge on the, the bulks for, for width here, uh, but height is, is no contest. Bulks is significantly higher than the concealment cut. Probably three, if not four inches higher. Uh, so you definitely feel this, you know, encroaching on your neck and wrapping around your shoulders more than you you're going to with this velocity setup. And I think, you know, a lot of that comes into this being more um, geared towards law enforcement customers, right? So this, this is built to be a, a cut that you would wear in concealed soft armor on a regular basis. Uh, and then Velocity kind of standardized the the concealment cut to their to their own brand. I don't know how 
how widespread this cut is uh, within law enforcement and then turned it into a, an outer uh, armor carrier, right? So when I first saw this, this type or this, uh, a member of this family, if you will, it was the low profile assault armor carrier, I think through OP tactical, uh, really interesting setup. It doesn't have a lot of the, the kind of standard features that we have these days, you know, with, with Tegris and structured cummerbunds and, um, potentially a QD feature or zip on panels or anything like that. But it was this lower profile concealment cut armor with uh, a full Molly coverage. Um, so something that you could put a, a pretty significant loadout onto if you wanted that gave you increased um, ballistic protection over a true plate carrier. Um, so I've, I've had my eye on it for a while. I stumbled on somebody willing to trade me this one. And this one is a, a rather goofy configuration, but it, it got me into the, the armor and let me try it out. And I'm a fan. It's very comfortable. The height is, is pretty good in my opinion. So you can have a true full belt kit with this and it, nothing really competes for real estate. Granted, I have a little bit longer torso than I should. Um, and the gentleman that, that I got this from said that he was having issues with it bumping into his belt kit. I don't feel like I'm having that issue. Maybe my belt's too low. Maybe I'm wearing it a little bit higher than he was. I like it. I think it interfaces well with the belt, right? <clears throat> so looking at this carrier, keep in mind that there's different configurations within the same family. This one, I don't know exactly who the contract was for. I reached out. And, and I've been told that it was for a State Department setup. So it's a little strange. I'm not a huge fan of the actual outer configuration, uh, but we'll walk through it either way. All right, so starting on the front panel, there is an admin pocket uh, with no organization or anything going on there, just a Velcro closure. Uh, and it stops right here, so it's four inches deep. Four inches deep is a good admin pocket size, in my opinion. You can get yourself a right in the rain in there, a couple of writing implements, maybe a GRG, you know, maybe a couple of small uh, tool type items, maybe a pry bar, whistle, compass, something like that. It'll fit in here. Uh, it's, it's external to the plate pocket, so it has some volume to it. Not much, um, just enough. I like it. Uh, the rest of it, we've got full Velcro coverage up here, except for this very bottom row. Um, this thing's really built for ID placards, um, is the way it appears, right? It has uh, vertical webbing here, so it should be able to incorporate side release buckles, whether you do surface mount or just repair buckles, and then hang a placard on here if you want. It has a large uh, kangaroo pocket here, which I haven't, I, I neglected to try dropping a, a magazine insert in here only because this configuration is just not, not very standard, uh, but it should take a triple insert without too much issue. Uh, it, it's just gonna make this real estate essentially useless because your mags are so close to your body. I think you would have better performance with a placard. Right. That said, You've got a pretty honking Velcro flap here. Oh my goodness. That we could put our uh, cummerbund under and then close down on it if we wanted to. The kangaroo pocket is behind this flap. Um, so if I was feeling really squirrely, I could try to remove this large panel, which I think is essentially not needed if you're using a placard. Um, I don't know. I might explore doing that later. Right. <clears throat> Molly off on the sides here. That's an absolute win in my opinion, and I hope that that's the case on any of these variants. 
really good spot for radios uh, or potentially, you know, a, a fourth and fifth mag if you're using three mags centered, which I think you could fit in there or on top of here, either, either way, just fine. Um, and then I like that it's three columns. So depending on how your cummerbund ends up interfacing, you can push the radios out a little bit so you have less bulk right up front uh, and it extends out to the flanks a little bit more, right? I think the front panel is a pretty solid setup. I just don't care for this massive uh, Velcro field here. It's too much in my opinion, All right? And then the Velcro or the, the cummerbund, obviously once you once you wear this and stuff starts you know, curving around your body is gonna interface up front. <clears throat> All right. What I really like about this configuration here is the soft armor is installed uh, from the inside face, right? You open up this Velcro, drop in your soft armor. The rifle plate pockets are external. So you can drop a rifle plate in here anytime you want. You don't have to get back into the soft armor compartment, which is a huge convenience. Uh, Big fan of that because it's really easy to plus up to rifle armor on here if you want to. Uh, and that closes up plenty clean. It leaves that uh, potential for danglers if you want to, which is typically not a good option on these soft armor carriers just because you know, you can't really put a dangler in that seam. And a lot of times the rifle plate pocket will be inside this pocket and, and pretty hard to get to. Uh, while we're in here, you know, there's there's some cable routing, which is cool. And then there's the, the side release buckles for, uh, you know, armor panels or something like that hanging down. I'm not a huge fan of these being fixed. And I don't foresee myself getting a groin panel for this. I will probably cut these buckles off. But I'll do it by cutting the buckle, not the webbing. So I can always pop a repair buckle back on there. So that's the front panel. Uh, shoulder straps, very simple, very straightforward. They are, you know, just a webbing sandwich or Velcro sandwich with all the slack taken out of the back and then secured up front. Not the most adjustable setup. Uh, if you need to go smaller, uh, you're kind of stuck, all right? So hopefully it fits out of the box or you're a giant and you need to extend the webbing. <clears throat> all right. Looking at the back, you can see how goofy this setup gets. The cummerbund has no molly on it. It is uh, entirely Velcro covered, which I don't know why. Uh, not a huge fan of that. So if I keep this and, and actually try to use it for anything, uh, which at this point would just be LARPing anyways, I'll probably try to drop a new cummerbund in here. If I do that, I've fixed most of the issues because I now have uh, some molly to work with, right? Uh, as far as that goes, Back panel is very, very similar to the front panel, right? You got a nice drag handle here, uh, which I would assume is sewn beyond just this, but tough to verify. Um, the back is also placard friendly. So Velocity's done that on a couple different setups where it's built for a back placard. Not totally sure why I would want a, a placard on the back, but if you know if you want hydration or something like that or a longer pouch just put a molly panel on here it doesn't even have to be you know with side release buckles there's so much velcro back here you could just velcro molly on and mount a hydration carrier or whatever else you need looking at the cummerbund attachment here it is a fixed sleeve uh, and you can see very easy cummerbund to work with uh, we've got some elastic built in there and then this is you know fixed length cord so we just run our drawstring up or loosen it up to get more slack crazy easy to use uh also easy to replace right i can drop in essentially any cummerbund i want but there's no velcro in this channel to interface with so that's kind of the only downside uh, and then really the only thing left to talk about is the the cummerbund which we kind of already hinted at is a little useless in this configuration. It does have elastic sleeves on the inside, uh, sewn across the bottom and then just open top. So these should take 
five, five, six mags without too much issue. A little tight. You know, steel mags would work better, or aluminum mags, but P mags will fit in there fine. They're just going to ride kind of high, which is not ideal. Um, but it's got the slots. Velocity's done that on a handful of things, so nothing new there. And then the cummerbund opens up as well, so we could drop in some, some side plates if we wanted to. Uh, we'd have to figure out how to retain them side to side, um, but... No issues there. You could also drop in some more side armor panels if you wanted, or soft armor panels. Ideally, if this thing fits correctly though, you're gonna have some overlap front and back, so you shouldn't need that. Uh, hard plates would be your one consideration. And then same setup on the back here where the rifle plate goes in on the exterior face of it. So very, very, very easy to drop in a rifle plate, which I'm a fan of. So there you go. That is the uh, Velocity Systems concealment cut setup i think kind of my ranking for like soft armor setups would be that the lvs is far and away the best option uh, but it's also a pretty steep initial investment and you are absolutely married to uh, cry products when you do that this setup is next best for comfort in my opinion uh, you do give up a little bit of coverage over bulks, uh, but this is much more comfortable. And then bulks has the benefit of being, you know, far and away the most common option. So if you if you're issued a, a carrier with spear or bulks cut armor in it, and you don't like the carrier, you're not going to have to look very far to find a, a a compatible carrier in a configuration that you like. If you get this cut of armor, which is more comfortable, I think you're essentially stuck with Velocity Systems carriers. Granted, they have a handful of options, you just got to track them down, um, which may or may not be a little bit of a challenge. So, you know, what I want to wear, Cry is first, this is second, Spear is third. What makes sense to wear, I think Spear is still uh, the obvious option. Um, unless somebody else is footing the bill, this may be the way to go. It just, it really depends on the, the carrier. The, the armor is a win in my opinion. It's finding a carrier that's going to work for you that may be a challenge. So thanks for your time, guys. Hopefully you learned something. I know I learned something trying this out. It's a pretty comfortable setup. Big fan of it. The outer carrier, I got to find a way to work with. So thanks for your time.